straight out to Aisha Khan with WBTW. Aisha, it's my understanding she went down to Myrtle Beach on spring break. Her mom told her no. She went anyway. But she has no history of disappearing in the past. What do we know, Aisha? Well, at this point, you know, when I talked to Drexel's mother, uh, Dawn Drexel, she said, you know, she talked to her daughter on Wednesday, you know, indeed didn't give her permission to go to Myrtle Beach. I think she had requested her mom, well, can I go to Myrtle Beach for spring break? And the mom said no, but she left Wednesday night, apparently, and kept contact with her mom up until Saturday. And then come Saturday night, she gets a call from her friend, uh, John Hahn, out of North Carolina. The mother gets a call from him saying, Brittany is missing. And that call, actually, the initial call came from Brittany's boyfriend, um, who had actually called John Hahn of North Carolina, saying, I need to talk to you about something. This is in the middle of the night um, around Saturday, and that's when the, the news broke out to Don Drexel. Aisha Khan, where was she last seen alive? Um, according to police reports and friends that were hanging out with her told her that, you know, we switched from one hotel to the next hotel. So they were originally at Bar Motel, Bar Hotel off of Ocean Boulevard and then moved on to Boardwalk Hotel. And their friends uh, are telling uh, police that that's the last time they had contact with her. Now, um, she, and went then there were several this, police she went back to this other hotel to see a friend she knew from hometown Rochester. Did he say she appeared there? She showed up? Um, in the police reports, that's what that's the uh, statement he gave to police, saying that was the last contact he had with her, and then she walked away, and after that, he never saw her. And he is cooperating with police, yes, no? Um, from what I know, uh, what Don Drexel told me this morning that when she talked to that, that friend's name is Peter, uh, uh, I'm not getting his last name right now, but his name is Peter Broswick. Um, and she said that I talked to him on the phone this morning saying, you know, I'm going to call the authorities. She said I put him on the phone with the sheriff, gave him a different story, but then gave Don Drexel a different story. And then turns out later on Saturday around one o'clock in the morning, he checks out. So that's something the mother is saying, you know, she, she feels a little fishy about. So. Straight out to John Hahn, a friend of the missing girl. He reported her missing. Mr. Hahn, thank you for being with us. I understand that you're in the military near there at Camp Lejeune. You got a call in the middle of the night from her family. You took care of reporting her missing. What can you tell me about the last person to have seen her alive changing his story? Is that true? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, several different people throughout the two-day period that I was down there investigating, uh, reported that he's been changing his story. Uh, I don't know him personally. I think it's very, very shady that somebody decides to make a 17-hour drive back to Rochester, New York at 2 o'clock in the morning, leaving clothes, liquor, and a deposit back at the hotel. Mr. Hahn, I also find that extremely disturbing. When you say he changed his story, in what way did he change his story? He would change his story with small details, saying he saw her at this exact time. He was doing this. This is why she left. And then all of a sudden, it was a, de a different reason why she left. And then it was, you know, a half an hour difference. And then the reason why he left was because he wanted to get back in time to be at school. But, yeah, you want to be back in time. Why would you leave a $100 deposit at the front desk of the hotel?